If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We look at the equation for the electric field, and what we would note first is that the i hat component as well as the k hat component are both constant values. And the reason that we know that is because if we look at their expressions, we don't see any variable in them. This is negative 3, and then this is positive 3. Again, those are constant values, as opposed to the j-hat component, which has the variable y squared in it. And the reason we emphasize the constant electric field vectors is for the following reason. Let's take a look at the electric field component in the i-hat direction. We recall that i-hat refers to the x direction. And in this case, the electric field in the x direction has a value of negative 3. So if we come over here to the x-axis and we can say perhaps that this direction of the x-axis is positive and maybe back behind the cube is the negative x direction, that means that the electric field, because of that negative sign, is pointing in this direction here. Now we can see that this constant electric field will pierce the Gaussian surface on this side and then it will exit behind the cube. And what that means is that the amount of electric flux that's entering the cube on this surface is going to be the same as the amount of electric flux that is exiting the cube on the opposite surface. That means that the net or total electric flux in the x direction is going to equal zero. And so we can actually disregard this contribution of the electric field. The same argument will hold for the k-hat component, which is the z direction. Again, it has a constant value. So if we call this direction positive z, and then maybe this way negative z, it's positive. So the electric field in that direction would be coming up underneath the cube like this. But however much electric flux enters the cube on the bottom surface will be the same amount of electric flux that exits the cube on the top surface. So once again, the total electric flux is going to equal zero. And so the only component of the electric field we have to consider is the component in the y direction, the j-hat component. So we can actually rewrite the electric field by dropping the other components and just writing it as negative 4.00y squared, and then that is the j-hat component. So now that we have rewritten the electric field, what we're going to do next is look at the electric flux. And we know that electric flux is going to equal a closed integral of the dot product of the electric field and the differential area vectors. Let's talk about the differential area vectors. And to do that, let's come over and consider this surface of the cube right here. We can draw a differential area vector by extending it so that it's perpendicular to the surface. So it'll make a nice right angle there. And it also points away from the Gaussian surface. These differential area vectors will always point away from the Gaussian surface. So we would have a differential area vector on this surface oriented like so. And then on the other surface, which is sort of obscured here, maybe we can try to draw it in. So we're looking at this surface right here, basically the left side of the cube. There's a differential area vector that's pointing in this direction here. And again, notice it's extending away from the Gaussian surface. And in order to evaluate the flux now, we're going to actually find the electric flux through that right face of the cube, as well as the left face of the cube. Remember, we're considering the right and the left face because the electric field is acting only in the y direction. And so we're going to be only considering those two faces of the cube. So why don't we look at the right face first? And we would note for the electric flux through that right face that we could rewrite this integral by using the laws of dot products. So we can take the magnitude of the electric field and multiply it by the magnitude of dA, as long as we include the cosine of the angle between dA and the electric field. It's important to note that this is between dA and the electric field. Now we've already said dA points to the right. Let's consider the direction of the electric field. The electric field is given by this equation right here. And what we want to notice is that this face of the cube is located at a y coordinate equal to y1. The question notes that y1 is 4 meters. And so if we plugged 4 into the electric field equation and then squared it out and worked it out, we would see that it's equal to negative 64. Now the fact that it's negative means that the electric field 
through that surface would be pointing in the negative y direction. Why don't we arbitrarily call this direction positive and this direction over here negative? If the electric field is pointing in the negative direction, it would be, it would be pointing to the left. Now, look at the angle between that leftward electric field and the dA vector, and you should conclude that it's equal to 180 degrees. So coming over here to the integral, we can plug in the electric field magnitude, which is 64, multiplied by dA, and then multiplied by the cosine of 180 degrees. Now, cosine of 180 is negative negative 1, I should say. So we're going to actually have negative 64, which we can factor out of the integral. So we have negative 64 times the integral of dA. Of course, the integral of dA is just the area of that face of the cube. Now, we were told that the cube has an edge length of 2 meters. So the area of that right surface of the cube is simply going to be 2 meters multiplied by 2 meters. That gives us the area of that square region. So we can plug in 2 meters times 2 meters, or 2 squared. And when we work this out, we're going to get negative 256. Now the unit of electric flux would be the unit of electric field multiplied by area. And so that's newtons per coulomb times meters squared. So, so far we have, we can write it as newton times meters squared per coulomb. So far we have determined the electric flux through the right face of the cube. Let's go and do the left face next. Now over here on the left surface we have the y-coordinate. It's a little bit hard to read, but we said that the y-coordinate of the right surface was 4 meters, and since the cube has a length of 2, that means right over here would have a y-coordinate of 2 meters. So if we plug 2 meters in for the electric field, we would see that it has a value of negative 6. Notice it's negative again, so the electric field is pointing in the negative y direction, which would point in this direction. So when we come to the flux, we're going to have the integral of the magnitude of E times dA times the cosine of the angle between them. The magnitude of the electric field is positive 16 times dA. But notice now the angle between the electric field, which points to the left, and dA, which also points to the left, would be 0 degrees. And the cosine of 0 is just 1. So we're left with 16 times dA in our integral. We can factor the 16 out, and then we're going to end up with the integral of dA, which is just the area of that left surface of the cube, which is the same as the area of the right surface. So it's going to be 2 times 2 again, and we end up with positive 64 newton meters squared per coulomb. So this is the electric flux through the left face. All we have to do is add that flux to the flux that was traveling through the right face. And so we'll take the 64 and we'll add it to the negative 256. And we end up with negative 192 newton meters squared per coulomb. So this is the total flux, which we can now finally use to get the net charge using Gauss's law. Gauss's law tells us that the net charge enclosed within the cube is equal to a constant multiplied by the electric flux. Now, this constant happens to have a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And then we just figured out the total electric flux. So we could plug that in as well. And when we multiply this out, we're going to get roughly negative 1.70 times 10 to the minus 9. And then the standard unit of charge is coulombs. So this is the correct answer to the question.